Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. Woo! <laughs> Yo, we got some rolling deeps in the back. I like it. At a cultured audience. Let's go. Let's do it. What's up, everyone? I'm Spike Vegeta. And uh, yeah, we're going to play Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. I want to jump into it pretty quickly because we started to fall behind schedule. I do have three awesome friends, but also some of them have played this video game before. Uh, VHV, I want to introduce yourself. Let's start over here. Hi, I'm Ghost Kimo. I've commentated like two runs <laughs> yep. the last day, so you um, might you might be familiar, but... <laughs> Bam! I'm Ghoul02. Uh, and I'm Derpy Dragon 15 I play the better Donkey Kong game, Donkey Kong 64 Randomizer. Yeah, specifically the randomizer. Go to dk64randomizer.com. There is a, uh, there's a randomizer for it. It's great. Anyways, with that, let's get started. We are playing the original mode. We'll explain what that is as we go through. I'm ready whenever y'all are on countdown. We're starting with a preloaded file, so we don't have to watch three and a half minute cutscene. Don't worry about it. It's Super Metroid <laughs> things. <laughs> but Donkey Kong does have a birthday cake on it. It's banana flavored. Probably delicious. <laughs> we got one banana fan in the back. <laughs> yeah, potassium! <laughs> Couple more chiming in there now. Yeah, yeah Kevin did. <laughs> Shouts to David Wise. <laughs> David Wise returned to make the soundtrack for this game. Yeah. Legendary. Absolutely legendary tracks all over this video game. Yeah, y'all know. I appreciate that David Wise got a louder applause than the bananas did. It did. <laughs> <laughs> the one who deserves I'm it the most. I'm not on the tier list. It wasn't like bananas. David Wise is pretty good. <laughs> Triple S tier, though. I need my potassium. So does this mean we have to ask the question, what's what's everyone's favorite fruit? What is it? Oh, we'll get to that in fruit world. Oh, we're yeah, we, we, we got plenty of time for that. Are we ready for a countdown? We... Oh, we're good. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think they were like, Spike's being an idiot. I don't know. <laughs> they all went off to dinner. All right, let's get started. Three, two, one, go. Woo! <laughs> we need to get back on schedule. I'm going to vamp for five minutes. All right, anyways. So, yeah, jumping right in. We're here in world one of six. Here in 1-1, one, one, we're starting off with Solo Donkey Kong. Wanted to show this off into one-player mode. Get a little more action for Diddy and Dixie early on in the level. So starting off with Solo, Solo Donkey Kong, he cannot infinitely roll. He's got to do these quick roll jumps. And then while we're going through the water here, I'm alternating between the breaststroke and the, uh, the corkscrew right there to kind of infinitely refund the other. Now we're just going to have some good spacing, bopping off these enemies right here. Come over, jump as you're pulling up the plug. That does actually make it pull up a little bit faster. And then use that grasshopper to get up to the platform. We're going to pull up another plug. Bait this enemy down right here. Oh, I'm shocked that worked. He's an idiot. Whatever. But now we got Diddy on our side. and Diddy! We're He's got them little pop guns. He also is good underwater, but we were just in water for a quarter of a second, so that didn't really help out too much. But now we have an infinite roll. As long as I press the Y button, frame perfectly, I'm just kidding, you can press it however you want, then he will keep rolling, rolling, rolling. What? Making it like Fred Durst right here. All right. <laughs> Sometimes that's all you need to do in this game. What do you need to do, GK? Roll it, roll it, roll it. What? <laughs> I already love this audience, dude. It's so good. <laughs> They're so loopy from the Pokemon earlier. <laughs> By the way, Jack, we have uh, met, obviously, a ton of incentives. We've met so many incentives, Deer Simulators meeting incentives. That runs in, like, 12 hours. <laughs> uh, did you have enough ease in that deer simulator by any chance? Or yeah, there were, uh, yeah I, I think I already forgot from what Shockwave told me earlier. There's like it, four E's in it. it it's it, four E's, yes, exactly. So you got to have the exact right length otherwise. Deer, uh, not just deer. So I do want to make sure because we have awful, or awful, sorry, silly block coming on later this month. That was the first level. That was pretty good. Um, <laughs> that was actually like perfect. That was nice. Oh, gosh, that I forgot. I got to transition <laughs> the thing. <laughs> We got Silly Block coming up later on in the night. We got lots of awesome games there. We also have some cool incentives. Uh, we'll jump into them here after this next level. We're going to have plenty of, like, auto-scrollers and stuff that we can uh, read through them. Nuclear would love to read your donations. So keep them coming in, chat, because I want to hear them. Let's jump now into 1-2. 
where uh, first thing we need to do is we need to uh, get up on top of this vine right here and then hopefully not get slapped by this dude on the left side. Drop down. Oh, he gave us a nice bit of space. That was good. We're going to ignore that Dixie barrel real quick. We'll get her in a little bit. Don't worry. Yeah, it's supposed to be the level where you get to utilize Dixie. Colin kind of introduces her to you, but uh, we're actually not going to use her till the end of the level. The advantage for her, Diddy gives you a little hover in the air. Dixie gives you a full-on practical double jump with it. But I want to use Diddy underwater because why, Ghoul? Uh, he is very fast underwater. He is the reason the water levels in this game are actually quite fun to speed run at high level. Mm -hmm. So you see just how quickly he's able to move. And it's also very maneuverable. You're not, when you do spins underwater, you're very locked in. You can kind of only go like a little bit left or right. Diddy just says like, you want to go up right now? Let's go up. Yeah, but he saves four seconds on this level, right, Spike? Yeah, like a good, yeah, I think about that much. There's that double jump from Dixie. You'll notice that unlike, if you guys remember the new funky mode speed run from uh, the other year, Funky just kind of like double jumps like immediately. Dixie's, there's like a weird like delay to it. She like kind of goes, uh, okay, let's go up. Yeah, there, uh, there's a lot of nuance to understanding how to make her hover be optimal. So there's thankfully not that many levels in this run where we're gonna have to utilize her and like really optimize those. It's very, very hard. Because here we're now going to the third and the final main Kong of the, the power-up Kongs, because you're always going to play as solo Donkey, or as Donkey Kong, and the others are as power-ups. We're going to be switching over to Cranky Kong, and uh, I don't know if there's one classic video game character uh, that we could uh, compare him to. Derpy, what would you compare him to? Um, Scrooge McDuck. Scrooge McDuck yeah. energy right here. DuckTales did, in fact, get into this marathon. Look at the climb action from Cranky right here. Bam, already up into the barrel. Good spacing, pogoing everywhere. You can get maximum height off that. You can also go for both medium and small bounces, neutral bops everywhere. Gives infinite options for where you can land your pogos. I'm going to try to get good spacing right here. Oh, that's beautiful. All through the hummus glue section. If you don't know why we're calling it hummus glue, don't worry about it. Our community's quite silly. But beautifully <laughs> done. Taking that damage boost through that entire section. And now we go on to the end of the level. So, so Spike, you said he can pogo off of infinitely anything. Does that include bottomless pits? If, <laughs> that is maybe his one weakness. And the only real reason why we're going to have levels where we do transfer over to Dixie at times. But really good first three levels. Very nice. And so sure. that really ties into the whole, you know, original mode. Um, which is effectively how this game was released when it first came out on Switch before we had stuff like New Funky Mode. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, we're, we're going to need some very serious time at the start of 1-4 here. This is a major skip. Saves minutes on the run if yep. Mike hits this first try. Yeah, yeah. One of the biggest time saves possible in this game right here. Yeah, tons of minutes that in total add up to a quarter of a second. But if we miss it, we lose a lot of time. So we're going to try to skip this barrel right here. I'm going to try to go for a full pogo, neutral bump off this enemy. Big pogo, big pogo. Okay, we made it. That, that skip literally saves a quarter of a second. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we nailed it. So this is the first of the five auto-scrollers. Generally during these, I want Nuclear to just read off as many donations as she can. The only thing I will note about these is that when you're in the mine cart, generally I want to be jumping up everywhere. Jump up slopes, jump down slopes, uh, taking damage boosts where I can add in more jumps, and that will save, you know, some seconds over the course of the level. But with that, you got about a minute and a half, Nuclear. Let's go for it. All right, we've got $100 from GMO Agway saying, loving the speed. Had to donate for a chance for the most beautiful Xbox I've seen. And knowing the money is going to a good cause is a big plus. And that's a great reminder that we have a ton of great prizes available right now, including that beautiful tunic-themed Xbox Series X. If you donate $100, you'll be entered automatically to win that. But there's other prizes that are even cheaper to win, such as the $5 Minecraft for Nintendo Switch, and there's even a Donkey Kong barrel pin for $20. That's it. So if I want you want a, a DK themed prize, that's a barrel pen. And you just donate the amount and you automatically get entered to win those. Sounds like a ton of awesome prizes, everyone. Make sure you get your donations in there. Now, I know we just spent, y'all probably just spent all your money <laughs> getting to 800000 What if we hit a million during this run? Woo! I believe, Spike, that uh, our last event, AGDQ 2022 Online, we met 1 million at about 9.30 p.m. on Wednesday, which is, it's Wednesday tonight. Oh, we've got God. about an hour and a half, so maybe we can push it. Uh, th that's about how long this run is. Yeah. 
That is perfectly said. I'm just saying, chat, it is a layup for y'all. Just another $200,000. I won't tell anyone. I know I would love to see us hit one million tonight. I know we can do it. Let's do it, Twitch chat. Come on. Now, here we got the first boss of the run right here. We got Pompey, big top bop. And this is uh, the, definitely the aspect of the run that got the most broken <laughs> going to the Switch version. Uh, Ghoul, can you explain at all what happened here? Yeah, so for some reason, Pompey's hitbox is just like a little bit bigger on the Switch version or something. It's not like really clear what happens, but he's going to be vulnerable even when he's kind of jumping out to do his like throwing the things out. That was not possible in the Wii U version. We don't really know what changed. I've got a little pet theory. So in the original Wii U version, uh, bosses had actual RNG to them. They would do different things depending on, you know, different patterns and stuff like that. On the Switch version, uh, they re-optimized the game in a lot of places. And my guess is that they kind of just, removed, when they removed RNG, just something kind of flipped on uh, Pompey. And now that little hitbox is available for Cranky to hit on basically any time. Uh, we have some really funny moments. Just uh, kind of watch how Pompey goes flying out to the middle of the stage whenever he gets damaged uh, while he's on top of the side of the wall there. Very important that Spike just got a heart drop there while taking a hit because he does not want to lose Cranky on this fight or he's not getting him back for three more levels. And Cranky is very good. He's very fast, so. Yeah, okay. yeah it's the first of the hits. The transition hits into phases one, two, and three. Those are definitely the hardest ones. I forgot you had to get those. I haven't done those in a while. All right, let's come over here. Ooh, he's off to the side. There's no way we're hitting this. Uh, uh, there's no way. Yeah, we're just letting the dude land. You would just be able to hit him higher up off the screen. Saves a little bit. There we go. Flying out to the middle. Of the, <laughs> what is that? A U uh, half pipe? That's the word. Yeah, he's Tony. He's basically yeah. Tony Hawk. You just punched Tony Hawk. I'm so, yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I thought he, man's retired. My bad. But with that one world down, Nico is going and getting a couple of donations whenever transitioning between worlds, loading into T1 here. Now we've got $1,000 from an anonymous saying, Ooh. my wife's a big fan of Illumina in the Minecraft speedrunning community. Great to see them on the GDQ main stage. They'll be coming up next. Yeah, overall, I'm pretty happy with being able to hit seven out of the eight early hits right there on Pompey. There was only the one that I missed on the transition. You have to wait till a very specific time when he's actually vulnerable. That's not why I just, that's why I didn't just jump right at him. But now going into world two, the music definitely gets really, really banging here. David Wise, again, absolutely killing it here in the soundtrack. But also, the game gets a lot harder because there are bottomless pits all of a sudden. And that is Cranky's biggest weakness, as we brought up earlier, is that he can't pogo off bottomless pits. And there's a lot of what we're doing where you end up optimally, you want to pogo off of like the very ends of platforms just for correct spacing in a lot of places. So, uh, you know, if I'm slightly off, I'm a little too far forward, a little too far back, all of a sudden we're in a pit and we're losing a ton of time. Because uh, you haven't seen me die yet, but if I were to die, then uh, I would lose whatever partner Kong I had access to at that point. And not every level gives you access to every Kong. So this level, there is no Cranky Barrel. So if we lose Cranky or lost Cranky at any point, uh, Cranky's gone. And uh, Cranky's actually really important for a lot of reasons. Not only are the Pogos, you know, very nice for platforming, getting us over spikes and things like that, uh, it also saves us time because every time we get one of those pogos off, we save a little bit of time. There's a little bit of a startup to rolls. Uh, I, I remember correctly, it's like a quarter of a second or so, but every time you cut one of those out with the pogo, you're saving a quarter of a second. Yeah. That was yeah. actually a really nice roll into the barrel right there, right as the platform has kind of fallen out. Yeah. And so. where Cranky really saves the time and why we don't want to lose him on this level is actually the next level where we're going we're gonna to meet a friend in the next level as well. And it's worth noting that you mentioned uh, re-optimizations for this particular version of this game. One of those optimizations actually being that this game loads way better on the Switch than it does on the Wii U. Yeah, it's basically you go from the Wii U version, I believe it was like nine minutes faster of loads, which is like, this game's only like 80 minutes long. Nine, of, nine minutes worth of watching this screen were sucked out of the Wii U version and thrown in the trash. So yeah, much more optimized game and uh, it's nice to see. So now we're at level 2-2. Two two. Shout out to Tudos. Nope. Shout out to Tudos. DK64. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. After we finish this run, we can go play some DK64 right now. I mean. Uh, but yeah, this is our friend here, um, lovingly named Rompus. Rompus the Rhombus. Rompus the Rhombus, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, yeah, he, he's a rhombus. Don't don't ask questions. Uh -huh. This is now a geometry class. That is a rhombus. Yeah, and using him as a bit of a Yoshi object right there in order to jump off and get up to this higher platform, that's okay. He's somehow going to warp forward. And, and why Cranky in particular is really good here for the, the rhombus himself uh, is, as you see, the pogo still brings, uh, brings the, the rhombus up. And... Uh, the other Kongs, they don't lift him quite as much. The, the old man is the strongest with his cane. He, he can lift the Rhino as much as possible. And that just keeps us, that gives us the speed, that gives us the height, that makes this level in particular much smoother. Jumps such as that one right there. <laughs> Spike, not, not quite into the Cave of Wonders, yeah. unfortunately. Spike would not have been able to do that movement if he had Dixie or Diddy. Yeah, that's actually a pretty big boost right there. I was happy to get the amount I did. Let me also make sure I don't die in this section. So oh, can we even get over the extra blocks? Oh, the bonus. Let's go. So something important to note is that Cranky does preserve whatever momentum you have. So you'll notice that as he was going across those swinging platforms, he was running and jumping at very particular points. The idea there is you carry that momentum, Cranky keeps it, and you're going significantly faster. If you see the difference, it is night and day. It's not even close. Um, fun fact, that is one of the hardest levels to get a, what we call it, it's called a shiny gold. So this is yes. a gold in time attack mode. That is probably one of the hardest ones if you don't know if you don't like see and know how to play the level. The, the shiny gold on that track is very difficult because they knew about the momentum boost apparently. What's unique about this level? It's the first of three levels in the run. This is an absolutely terrifying level to speed run. Oh, and oh it just no! My wars. Uh oh. Well, we are improving immediately. So this level has uh, most things in this game are camera based. Depending on where you are, will change what things are on screen. This entire level is synced up to the music. Uh, you'll notice that these horns are going to be blowing up and down for these leaves as we go through, which means our platforms are in different places. Uh, so Spike is going to have to improv quite a bit here. Yeah, so everything is, oh, I've never made that mistake before. That leaf was just like, yo, what's up, dude? So yeah. Everything that was about to be planned got messed up right at the beginning of the level. So we are just absolutely, okay, we're just gonna trust. Yep, okay, all those caught us, that's great. Off the schnitzel, let's go. One, two, four, out of the woods, but we're not out of the fire yet. Off the top of the leaves, don't get rid of those. Off the top of the big boy, neutral off the poker, and we are, we're out of the scary part all of a sudden, okay. Very nicely done, nice adjustments. Yeah. On the fly, uh, that level, if you do it optimally, it should do the same thing every time, but uh, any mistake is pretty much yeah. death because, again, Cranky does not like bottomless pits, and there are a lot of them showing up now, you'll notice. Yeah. And if you notice the barrel was actually rotating on that one between the three different Kongs, that's kind of a trait you'll see in certain levels. If Spike lost uh, Cranky for any reason, he would have to sit and wait at a barrel, possibly, for Cranky. Each time it spins, that's a one-second loss. Yeah. So something else to note about that as well, the barrels are always on a global cycle. So if we need a specific Kong change, a lot of time we will root to where our movement will get us to that Kong barrel at the right time. If you, So sometimes you could have a bad, like, you know, missed jump or something and not die, but still lose quite a lot of time because not only do you have to, like, adjust and fix your mistake, you also have to get a new barrel. Yeah, so uh, that level was absolutely terrifying. Uh, we'll have two more global cycle levels later on the run. They shouldn't be as scary as that one. They don't have quite as many bottomless pits. But with that, we're in the second and final of the minecart stages. I always have to point out that is intentional. Everyone's like, God, this guy sucks. <laughs> Why'd they let him on GDQ? Um, so what doesn't suck is donations. Nuclear, I want to hear another good minute and a half's worth of donations as we're on our second auto scroller of the bunch. Well, Spike, I can definitely tell that the audience is loving this. They definitely do not think that you suck. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I've got $500 from Edward23 saying, rolling deep. Rolling deep, let's go. I also have $50 from Muddled Moogle saying, so hyped for this DKC tropical freeze. In fact, you could say that I'm going bananas for it. <laughs> I also have $25 from Varexel saying, He's finally here, speed running for you. If you know the tech, you can join in too. Come on. I was hoping he wrote a, I was hoping that was like a five I, I minute need, goal. We need, I need more of those. Yeah, keep, donate. Keep those coming in, I'll sing them all. Yeah, keep donating <laughs> more and more verses. I want to hear them. The, the spike can we Vegeta put together in the whole song? Can we, can we make a whole song about it? <laughs> <laughs> you got about another hour and five minutes in this run, so you can just keep working on it. 
Love the creativity in this level. Jumping into a minecart, it turns into a little raft, and then it goes back into a minecart. Unbelievable. The so minecart level of the game are genuinely very, very fun casually. I, I honestly have questions of how that machine works, though. It, it turns the boat in, back into a minecart, but Donkey and Cranky are just fine. Like, yeah, they're fine. <laughs> they're fine. Okay, hold on. I got, I got a real question. Spike, you didn't jump up the granny hill. I know. I honestly thought about that for GDQ jumping up. It. There's silliness back there where you can jump up one hill. This one little baby hill you might have noticed I didn't jump up. If you jump up it, that then the section with the three floating shrapnel pieces that you're riding on, those actually get a lot tighter to where they're, like, close to frame-perfect jumping off of them. And, uh... A lot of us don't try to save those, like, couple of frames, but I could have done it for GDQ, and that would have been cool. But unfortunately, I probably would have died, and that would have not been cool. Uh, I don't Anyways, think, I don't think we said it, but uh, jumping while on the minecart's actually faster than just... Yeah, you generally want to jump all over the place. It's like, it's, they're surprisingly difficult to optimize for individual level uh, speedruns, but it's also, like, kind of hard to explain, because it's like, you want to jump up hills and, like, sort of down hills, but, like, at very specific times. And the difference is like two seconds total. Like if you like jump optimally versus just kind of like play it relatively safe. And right. given the uh, the punishment, especially on a GDQ stage, obviously very uh, astute of Spike to not go for some of the crazier tech in the run. Yeah, you'll notice Spike swapped to Dixie on this level. And if you just kind of look at the level, you'll probably take a guess of why there's a lot of pits and Dixie's really good at getting over pits. So. Cause she's the best Kong, right? Yeah, I'm about to say, Ghoul, the number one on the, the Dixie train here. Oh, my gosh, that super bounce is but The best Kong's not in this game. There's, there's no Chunky Kong. No Chunky Dude, I, I want to see I was literally just going to say, you better, not be, they, you better not be saying any name other than Chunky. <laughs> I'm imagining poor Donkey Kong. <laughs> with <laughs> like, Chunky on his back. With Chunky on his back saying, hey. So what I'm hearing is chat needs to settle this debate. Who is the best Kong? Let's get those yeah, donations chat, to tell us who the best Kongs are. I want to hear it. Best Kong in the DKC series. Let's get him. Chat. We got any lanky fans in the house? Yep. What do we got? <laughs> yep, that's what I thought. Not a lanky fan in the house. I like lanky. Uh, we need to hear favorite. from the lanky fans. He handstands when he needs to. Come on. Okay, but imagine but lanky no in this game. Lanky, I feel like, would be a good part. Lanky would be good in this game. What would he do? Like, would he, like... He'd run fast on his hands. He'd you can grab donkey. barrels from really far away. It's like Mr. Oh. Fantastic. Ooh, actually, what if you could just, like, grab a ledge or something and, like, slingshot Dude, yourself? we're theorizing DLC right you, you now. Just, you just get, like, the, uh, the, the, what is it? Like, what's the, the like, Bionic Commando or something where you just, like, have, like, a grab yeah, hook? That would be yeah. kind of cool. Oh, all right. right. Let's be real. Retro DLC, Nintendo's not updating <laughs> this game, Spike. <laughs> no, no, okay, another Donkey Kong Country game. We, we gotta, Eight we, years later. We, we got to make the trilogy, right? Huh. Listen, all I'm saying, Twitch chat, if you get us to a million dollars in the next hour during this run, Nintendo may care enough to make another DKC game. But... <laughs> that kind of thing. Honestly, like, one of the things that I loved about this game was it is so sparse to just see a, like, big... De like a big developer make a 2D platformer anymore. Yes. It was like the last ones were like Rayman, which you also speed run like Rayman Origins and Legends, and this game, so... Hey, the, the rabbits from Rayman are still getting games made. <laughs> Don't make me cry. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now I'm a cry. So. We'll, we'll blame the right. rabbits. Don't worry. <laughs> yes. So as dumb as that mod looked, I was trying to land on the very front of this platform so I could have optimal movement, which I didn't have, so I could grab this cranky cycle right here. Not going to grab it, so now we're going to grab it. That is a... No, I've never done there before. That, was <laughs> I was say, least, that, that might be a new one. That was, uh, hey, you know, that was like a 10-second death. That's fine for our first death of the run. Hey, we need to switch to Cranky anyways. It's fine. But with that, we got this last section coming up right here. I always like to give a shout-out to my boy Jay Hobbs. He always tried to make it a challenge right here to avoid as many bananas as you could. So that's, that's the most I learned right there. He tried to dodge every banana in the game. And you get a nice little speed boost right here. From jumping off of that vine, you can carry that for a little bit. What's fun is because Cranky's cane only touches the ground for like, you know, a frame or two, it actually doesn't depreciate your speed off of like platforms and swinging vines and stuff. So that's what allows him to maintain all this momentum potentially. <laughs> but with that, that was an awful death. <laughs> it wasn't like, like I lost like 10 seconds, but I looked like a moron. <laughs> you have time for a quick donation? Please, God, anything. And we got $25 from Cross Fortune saying, let's go, Spike, you've got this. Yo, Doing my part to push to the million. 
Woo, woo. Go, we're getting closer, chat. <laughs> I also have another part of the song, $50 from Potassium Fix, saying he's the leader of the bunch. You know him well. He's finally back to kick some tail. His coconut gun <laughs> can fire, fire in spurts. Spurt. If he shoots ya, it's gonna hurt. He's bigger, faster, and stronger too. He's the first member of the DK crew. Huh. <laughs> now we need more. <laughs> so real quick, uh, this boss is going to spawn three of these little owls inside of eggs for each phase. If you lose those, the phase goes another cycle, which takes forever. This is a very fast boss if done optimally. If you do it poorly, you lose a ton of time. Uh, first phase, about 40 seconds. This is the most forgiving, which is nice because it's also the hardest. So we're right here, we're gonna get this first owl. We gotta hold it, we gotta get the second one on screen. So we're gonna go one, two, three, hit this one. We're gonna run forward, we're gonna spawn the next one, and we're gonna throw this. We gotta pick the first one up real quick. We got it. Yeah, because it's about to go off screen and now immediately throw this one off to the left side as he's spawning in. Uh, also to note, the music here is absolutely Sephiroth's theme and this is Sephiroth as a bird. Yeah, the more you listen to it, you're like, oh my God. We're, we're, we're now playing, playing Final, Final Fantasy. Into an owl. Yeah. <laughs> That you actually just play a bunch of different games on this. We play, we're playing Final Fantasy. We'll we, play some we, other games. We had Tony Hawk in World One. We had Tony Hawk. Like, we, we had Tony Hawk. Um, it's a brilliant melding of different game, game franchises. We'll, we'll be going to Lion King here shortly. Don't worry. And now here for Phase Three. This is uh, potentially a very very cool strat where I can save a whopping two seconds. And if I miss it, I'm losing 48 seconds. So let's go for it, Jack. <laughs> we have got once again. We've only got two eggs to work with right here. Some tech right there to make sure I got a maximum bounce off of the other enemy without actually killing it with Cranky's Cane. I want to make sure Donkey's Knuckle is in a very specific spot on the floor. Go for a little bit of a visual cue right here. Let's, Let's go! go! Oh! <laughs> I thought I jumped too late. <laughs> So for anyone at home using math, if you were counting right there, the egg that I bopped him with initially was only hit number seven. Every boss in this game has nine hits. What happened right there was I jumped up onto his head. I took damage first, dropping the other egg in my hand, and then did a quick bop bop both with my body and the egg's body in order to get a quick double hit and end the fight immediately. So very cool, I'm glad I got to do that. Uh, here at GDQ. I'm really glad I didn't screw it up. I thought I did. <laughs> but with that, this is the second of the three levels that, this is the Lion King level, just like Derpy was talking about. This is the second of the three levels that are going to adhere to global cycles. So as soon as I load into the level, everything, all the enemies, all the platforms, everything, they're all swaying back and forth. So any mistakes I make could possibly cost a bunch of time. So we're gonna make sure that doesn't happen. Uh, it's about seven seconds for every cycle. And of course, also just messing up means that those pits are going to be in the wrong spots, which uh, we don't like to see that. We actually do a little bit of a setup right here. Where I'm going to wait for this thing to get all the way to the right side, then go. That is going to actually manipulate this dodo bird to always be right there. Now let's ride back because I got to make sure I get my trusty friend the puzzle piece. We do not need puzzle pieces, but I need that puzzle piece in particular. And now right we can here. make our way forward, and this is the cycle we're yep, trying we're gonna to get We're going to catch through. this giraffe right here. See how it's a little bit too far? You just can't make that jump right there. And then this one right here, yeah. another big one. Yeah. Th this is the one that you don't want to have to wait for, because as you saw, that's a very big gap that that, is, that giraffe is traveling. So we're going to uh, grab another cranky barrel, go right on top, and we got another little set of cycles coming up right here. We're going to go through here. These snakes right here cause some big cycles. We're going to go jump at the top just barely, roll through, roll through, climb on up. We got to get to the far one, and we're going to make it just in time, no problem. Run up the snake and onto the other snake. Okay. And th there's one little cool strat here right at the end where you're going to see Spike <laughs> kind of crawl up on the head of this last snake to get into this barrel a little early. Now, this somehow got broken on the Switch version. There's a strat there where you could like jump up and to the right into the barrel. You can still do it, but it's now like a two frame trick. That's weird. So, but that's still, we got through. We didn't lose any seven second chunks of times. So I'm happy with that. Let's actually, <laughs> thank you. 
Let's actually read a couple of donations during this next level. There's some cool stuff going on up here. I'm gonna try to climb up a flower because that's things you do in 2D games. It's great. Um, but then we got the hardest trick in the entire game coming up in the next level. So let's read a couple of donations, Nuclear. Speaking of flowers, I have a 25 donation from Dad Jokes saying, "When? what do you get when you cross a monkey with a flower? What's that? A chimpanzee. <laughs> oh. All right, some mixed reactions. <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> there is some absolute dude bro energy going on in the crowd, and I am loving it right now. <laughs> Woo! Yeah! Let's go! <laughs> Rolling deep! Do you have time for a couple more, don't Oh, please do. All right, we got $10 from Weezer Coon saying, love me a spike run. I hope you unlock Chunky soon. Oh, wait. <laughs> I mean, they had a DLC to Mario Kart, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was many years ago. Yeah. Oh, we're going back. <laughs> Elza, oh, very God. important to have Cranky Sorry. for this next level, so we're going to go re-grab them. The, the next level is, like, one of the biggest tricks in the run, so we need Cranky for that. And I was yeah. Spike, if you lose Cranky again, oh, yeah. <laughs> we're jumping in that pit. Cause we got yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's not, uh, yeah. <laughs> This is, yeah, let's start to build it up a little bit. So this is the hardest strat in the game coming up. I like to build it up because it's that much funnier when I miss it. Also, you got to get these puzzle piece jumps. Oh, I didn't oh. get one. That's, it's, it's fine, it's fine. Um, <laughs> we try to jump out back and forth over that. Um, but uh, yeah, hardest trick in the run coming up. It's called the tornado -si do So there are going to be these tornadoes in the next level where if you roll into them, they eject you out the other side. They're like, nah, man, that ain't me. We're not going to let you pass this point. However, we're going to try to use that for our advantage by rolling back into one and having it eject us out to the right side of the screen, which is generally the side you want to go in a 2D platformer. We're going to try to maintain the, all that momentum because Cranky's cane is just going to tap the ground every time and not let that speed depreciate. I'm probably going to fail this one immediately, but we'll try to get what we can get. Here we go. This is the tornado right here. We're going to get ejected out. We're going to roll. We, look at all this speed. Look how fast we're going right now. We gotta go right here. We're gonna bounce off this. We're gonna get thrown up by that tornado. This is looking. Oh, uh, we got ejected right there. That's yeah, a little tricky I one because you go too right high, it, it mm. throws you back the wrong way. If you're too low, you, it throws you the wrong way. You have to be like the exact right height. That was still very, very yeah, good. Yeah, I was honestly like pretty happy with that. Yeah. So to note, if you get the whole thing, you would keep going, keep going, keep going. You would get all the way to this barrel right here. But we do get to see more rhombus, so. Yeah, there's more rhombus. If we if we got the whole thing, you don't see rhombus the whole time. Yeah, I was a little high on one of the jumps and uh, on one of the pogo bounces before I got to that midpoint barrel. But, so now yeah. we're going to be transitioning to Dixie right here. I'm not really trying to switch to Dixie, but rhombus has such a wide hitbox, you can't really avoid that right there. So, which is fine because we want to use Dixie actually for the next level. It's another gap-based level. It's always very funny to me that uh, Rambi could just run across those like little cactus plants without actually being spiked, so there's just not really a reason for them to be there. <laughs> right there, we're going to use the little Yoshi boost, get up to the top a little bit before the uh, platform comes down, and very nice level. Yeah, let's hear some more applause. Yeah, we're fine with that. We're fine with that. We'll take it. We'll take it. Um, so this next level is another one that I think if you're trying to get into speedrunning the game, there's the five auto scrollers, obviously pretty easy to learn. This is another one of the easier levels to learn. There's really not much to it. Uh, we're just going to uh, load into level, and uh, GK, what are we going to do? Keep rolling. Just keep rolling, 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 rolling. <laughs> I love this audience. This is genuinely, <laughs> genuinely one of my favorite audiences I've ever performed for. So anyways... Let's up. What? <laughs> I, th I think he said you're on fire. Oh, okay. I was I, like, I think, that, I think the jungle is on fire right here. But anyways, we're going to be rolling deep all the way through here. Let's get in a few more donations, Nuclear. We'll be right back. All right. We got $250 from Rip Tire, Tire saying, oh, banana. Good luck on the run, Spike. I also have $25 from Amati 1966 saying, been looking forward to this tropical freeze run all month. Let's go, Spike. Also have another verse for us. $10 from Phoenix saying, it doesn't have Lanky. It doesn't have grapes. This run is on record case. Uh, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> 
pretty my <laughs> record. <laughs> PB pace. PB pace. This run is on PB pace. pace. Heck yeah! There we go. <laughs> it, it's the best pace on this particular day in Minnesota. So yeah. that's uh, that's better than most. All right, I'm gonna try to save. Two, I'm gonna try to save two seconds right here. It's really really hard. If I mess it up, I lose a lot of time. This is like the theme of this run. Um, I'm gonna try to see if I get the right frame or not. I'm not even gonna try it. Oh, I gotta try it. I gotta try it. Oh, can I get the cranky cycle right here? Let's oh. go! Oh. oh. All right, Spike. Do you remember the saying that you need to remember? Yes. Oh no. Okay. So we came out. So so the story of that level is that uh, you want to catch that cranky cycle, but you only have a few frames to get grab it right at the beginning. So there is a way to know based on how quickly you mash out of the opening cutscene whether or not you even are able to get it. So there's a flame on the back wall that you can look at to be able to determine, do I go for it at all? Am I going to get it? Am I going to miss it? And the, I believe the rhyme was small and yellow, cranky hello. Fat and orange, your run is garbage. <laughs> I, I believe you had the fat and the small backwards, but yes, that is correct. What's it? Small and fat? Well, it's fat. It's the fat and yellow cranky hello is what fat, I have. Fat and yellow cranky hello. Small, and a, small and orange. What was I think we look at different points. So I, real, hey, real quick, I, 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 I took judging. that from newbie in the chat, so oh, I blame newbie. God, newbie. So, so of note, by the way, this is our first rocket barrel level. There is almost no speed tech other than get to the barrel as quickly as possible. You cannot speed up the barrel. You can't speed up the rocket in any way whatsoever. You just need to not die. Well, we are taking a secret exit here, though, because there's th actually two secret exits in that auto scroller. Yep. This one leads us to the shortest of the three levels you can get from the just leaving that level in any possible Which way. Which also conveniently cuts that level in half. Yeah, yeah. there's. you can see three levels up there that you can utilize to get to the boss. And yeah, I think the other two levels are each like 60 seconds a piece, and this one is 50 seconds. This is also, I think, the coolest looking of the three because it's uh, basically the level is building itself in front of you as you go. So if you know where you're going, you can look very cool. Let's see if I can look cool. I don't know. So again, all these, all these uh, platforms and cactuses and stuff are going to pop up exactly where Spike knows they're going to be. We're going to bounce off that, get a big old bop. And, and obviously, Cranky's very good on this level in particular as well, because he's bouncing off of Spike platforms that if he was a different Kong, he'd be taking damage too. Unless he was Funky Kong. Uh, also, you're able to pogo off of uh, those... What do you want to call those? Piranha plants? Another crossover <laughs> sure, game. Sure, yeah. <laughs> we, we, can, we can pogo off of those piranha plants with uh, Cranky, which none of the other Kongs can really deal with. Down to the end to set up for the full pogo, full pogo, full pogo, off the left ear in, take the damage boost right here, then put on a slight delay, and then shoot, get through safely, keeping our old man on our back, and into the next level. Well done. Very clean. That level actually is pretty difficult to learn, but it looks so cool when you get good at mm. it, for sure. Uh, one of the most satisfying levels of speed run. Yeah, and what's great about this run is that, like, for the most part, you brought up the time attacks earlier, Ghoul. I think the time attacks are actually a really good tool if you want to learn this game. I think it's actually a super accessible speed run. If you can get, like, the gold and obviously the shiny gold times on all those levels, then you're pretty much already built for it. And the time attacks actually have their built-in replay system to where you can just watch the top times and go from there. That being said, we are going into the World 3 boss right here. Triple Trouble, the three baboons right here. And Cranky, once again, the best for the boss, able to jump off of these spiked helms with the power of his cane. And the way this boss works is that as soon as you deplete any of their health to zero, any of the three of them, that will transition you into the next phase where there's only two cons. Now, a lot of what I'm doing is a little movement optimization to make sure that the correct baboons are coming down at optimal spots. So I'm standing in specific spots so they're not like wiggling around and dancing too much. And you'll see that these two healed now that he's done that. They'll, their color reset. So we're gonna go, okay, uh... Yeah, we're gonna do a little bit of a backup strat right here. That's fine. Throw the bomb at him, throw the bomb at him. Pick up this bomb. 
Oh, uh, you got the heart. This one's gonna drop off. Yeah. Yeah, so that's actually, like, that was actually a bit of an alternative shot. I didn't even lose too much time for missing that initial hit. So I was able to utilize the bomb to get rid of him immediately. And sometimes you might say, well, why aren't you just focusing on one of the three baboons if it only matters that one gets to zero health? That's because sometimes you're just getting the other baboons in position sooner by dealing damage to them and clearing them off the screen. Kobe! I have another one of those coming up here in a second. So I want to make sure I bait these bombs away in the proper positions. I made it to where this guy didn't move around too much. Now you got one more where they're going to spray the floor with quite a bit of bombs. Set up for another. I don't want to take damage early because I am setting up for a damage boost right here. To then on the descent, Pogo back up. Oh, no. Oh. Phil Mickelson. Okay, cool. I just whipped that bot completely, dog. I, I look back at Ghoul like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Let's read a few donations before we get into World 4. But that was good. I enjoyed that World 3. I had fun. All right. We got another song here. Another verse. $10 from Ar Aridin saying, how's this? It's Vegeta of the runs. You know him well. Uh-huh. He's finally back. Yeah? To bounce on eggshells. He's oh. skipping, hopping, and rolling too. Let's hit a million tonight on GDQ. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right, that, didn't, that almost worked. That was pretty good. I like the words, though. <laughs> SG GDQ 2022. <laughs> Time for one more. Um, yeah, so we're actually, we're loading into the world right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Katorse. We're gonna drop right down here because we're gonna transition now into Diddy, because Diddy is the king underwater. So again, the, the jetpack right here, we're gonna get extra movement speed and we don't have to use the very awkward, like, if you play this game and you don't know about Diddy, you'll end up doing the spiral stuff and you really lose a lot of your mobility doing that diddy doesn't have that problem so basically diddy is as mobile as like dk normally it's almost better to be solo dk than it is to be to have like a partner con that's not diddy underwater it's very strange kind of changes how the levels play entirely they're very very difficult and very like once you get them they're very fun so we're gonna go right here we're gonna just sneak in under that big old fish Missed the 50-50 right there on the heart. That is random, but now we're going to go past it. Want to try to make this Dixie cycle right here. Ooh, that is very close, but it's Ooh. fine. We still got it. So again, you see right here, this is that spiral I'm talking about. You see just how much more awkward that movement becomes. But we need Dixie because Dixie has the ability to fight these currents and get us through these levels a little bit quicker, which is uh, very, very nice. And also it's going to let us get to a secret X. It's going to cut out the second half of this level and get to a much faster half of the uh, stage as well. So we're going to go through here. This is probably the hardest secret exit to find in the game, by the way, if you don't yeah, know it's By there. far, they really, they, apparently somehow, you, find, you do this and then you just turn around. I don't know how you really understand to do this, but that's fine. You go back this way and here we go. We got to go, and then you have to go against the current. So if you don't have Dixie, you can't do this as well. Uh, you can technically with Diddy, but it's very slow. Yeah, there's some tech we'll talk about in a later level where I'm actually going to use Diddy to go against that current. But uh, yeah, Dixie is the intended way to go across it right there because her hair is magical. It's pretty cool. And now I want to hand it off to Ghoul actually for the next level. You did used to have the world record in the individual level here for 4A. Yeah, this is my, also my favorite level in the run for uh, one small reason. This is the only level in the entire game where you use all three Kongs. Now granted, Dixie is... She just kind of does a cameo at the start. Sure. But it's, <laughs> but it's, she's, it's, there, it's there. Yeah, she's there. It's, it's what matters. It's like being on a championship team, but you're on the bench. You're like, I got that ring, man. I yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she's the, uh, the the best bench sitter, you know, of all time. So we're gonna go right here. We're gonna go off this, under the shark, over this one. We gotta swap to Diddy right here for underwater. We're gonna roll, go over that, down here, bounce off the water, bounce off the water, up here, in through here. Big old water section. So we gotta save some time with the Diddy going through here. Right back up, roll, roll, roll. Uh, these are kind of fun because you can like be rolling while those get bumped up, and they'll throw you up, and you can keep your roll while doing it. So right here, we're going to pogo off of the spike. So again, we're on Cranky now. So we're on the third Kong. Bounce, bounce, bounce up. Right here, jump in. We got to go through here, but we got to use it without the Diddy, unfortunately. So we're going to go uh, into the current. Yeah, you can really feel the difference between Diddy and the others underwater. So right here, we're going to pogo. Roll here, pogo off that. Roll down. Very, very easy setup here. This is kind of tricky casually, but you roll down, you go to that banana, pogo, 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 and right up into the secret exit. 
thoughts for the future. Yeah, perfect. That was good. That was good play-by-play. -play. It's a super, super fun level. I would say a relatively accessible one. But uh, yeah, it's just fun that you actually get to utilize all three Kongs there. Dixie for the cameo at the beginning, but Diddy has his usage in that underwater section. And if you're perfectly moving throughout it, again, all those rotating Kong barrel cycles, the fact that we don't have to stop for any of them makes a level like that an absolute work of art that I never had to break stride, and I got to have the perfect Kong order going through the entire level. It, it almost feels intentional. It's very cool. Yeah. Uh, so right here, if you guys re remember the uh, previous time that the uh, non-funky mode was mm -hmm. done, this level has a big out-of-bounds on the Wii U version that uh, does not work on the Switch version. I don't know if this is a result of one of the optimizations that they did or something else, or if they just patched it because you know, out-of-bounds is just kind of generally a strange thing to leave in a game if you're re-releasing it. But that unfortunately means we have to do this level the intended way, which while this level is very long, it's one of the longest individual levels in the entire game, we're cutting out an entire level, and the levels we're cutting out are very long themselves. Uh, this is probably a decent time to, for some of our donations as well. Uh, all we're going to be doing here is we're going to be swimming, and we're going to collect these keys, and we're going to be... Uh, moving through the level basically as intended, just very quickly. We call this level Tropical Keys. Th this is the Metroidvania level, so we're playing another game within Donkey Kong once again. Yeah. <laughs> so what, we're on Tony Hawk, uh, Lion Final King. Fantasy, Lion King, and, and Metroid. Metroidvania. Anyways, nukes, go right ahead. All right, we got $25 from Smith Arun saying, donating for the Chunky Kong DLC. Nintendo can't ignore us if we Kong tribute. <laughs> Also, That's a good one. <laughs> I appreciate that, yeah. Also have $25 from Mining Melancholy saying Spike Vegeta is too charismatic of a runner to not donate to. Plus, DK DKC2 is one of the best games of my childhood, and Tropical Freeze more than lives up to that legacy. Happy to do my part as getting to 1 million during Spike's run would be King K. Rule. Woo! We are. We're climbing there, chat. I believe in us. Honestly, we're like twenty thousand. Yeah, we're doing very yeah. well. I'm very, like, I'm very you know, proud of you. Compared to the Pokemon run we just did, like that's the one. So I'm actually gonna do a backup strat right here. I'm gonna use the Kong Pow, so this dude doesn't take away my diddles. Crazy. Uh, we we really want Diddy at the start of the next level. Um, so that that's one of the main reasons why we we don't want to lose him here. Yeah, there is a way to just avoid him. The way that power works, it's, it's something you see casually. You, like, never see it in a speed run, but because it wastes, like, three seconds. Every time you fill up that banana meter in the top left corner, if you do a little, little, uh, little high five with your other Kongs, that will turn all the enemies on screen into something else, but then you got to fill up the meter again. We never use this. That meter's, like, max full. I, I will say one of the coolest strats in 100% does actually require a Kong yes, for the run. Yes, it does, yes. Uh, so the, the, the previous level, you 100%, but you get the secret exit of the same time so you go all the way to the end of the level and then you kong pow to get enough health to damage boost through a bunch of uh the spikes anyways this right. is yeah, one this of the is, hardest levels in the yeah, run this is four or five spike just stole that bomb from that uh, poor penguin used it to break through the the wall there and now he's just getting a bunch of roll jumps he needed to hit that cranky cycle right there that was very important because he needs cranky's jump to get over that wall right there and now we have to wait here so spikes can actually jump and grab these bombs up in the air because it starts the fuse a little bit sooner, so he's gonna do that again. He's gonna toss it over to break this wall, do a ground pound roll, and now he's trying to hit some very precise jumps right on the front of that platform that I hit, and there's another one coming up right here. And now he's gonna wanna get very precise movement there to get that shot, get that movement, that skipped a cycle, and now he needs to hit another Kong cycle here. He's gonna do camera nip to get a Diddy cycle, because we need Diddy for the very end here. Normally, you're supposed to kind of pound through a bunch of boxes. That's slow. We're going to jump off the edge and float. This is very hard. Oh, that's a very, very difficult yeah. level and also oh. one of the most punishing. It is yeah. one of the easiest levels in the game to death cycle on where you just die and die and die and you lose just total, like minutes. To, so many runs die yeah, that To stage. note there at the end, if Spike went a second earlier or a second late, he would have died and not hit the barrel at the end. Yeah, if you go too early, then you kind of just scrape up against the crates and you have no horizontal movement. So you just drop straight down. And obviously, if you go too low, you're too low and you're going to die. And we also, like, you could make it a lot easier if you get Dixie, but we don't want Dixie because we're doing another water level right here. We want the Diddy to be able to move through the water again. Look at just how smooth and how fast that underwater movement is with the Diddy jetpack. Yeah. This is the final major underwater level. So this is kind of Diddy's last hurrah, but it's, it's a big underwater level. 
going to take a damage boost here because the, you would have to wait for all of those spike balls to go out there. That's that's slow. Um, we're going to be taking actually a couple different damage boosts here in this level with Diddy uh, to get through some cycles. So right here, we're going to sneak through these little electrical thingies and go right on up. Super awkward double bounce right here. Boy, nice. Grab the Diddy barrel to refill again. Perfectly on cycle. It, it, it almost feels intentional sometimes when it lines up like that. It, it feels like it lines up so often. Here's too. the next damage boost. Then pick up that heart for especially safety because you're going to take another hit right there. Uh -oh, uh -oh, uh -oh, uh -oh, uh oh, 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 oh. No, there was. <laughs> sometimes when you go into a bonk, it won't give you the ability to press A for a while right there. You're just kind of stuck. So that is going to end up net being. Yeah, I mean, a six-second time loss here at the end. I got through almost the entire very hard section of the level. Um, I'm not too disappointed. I just nailed that four or five. I was pretty good. I took another damage. <laughs> I was just, I don't know, that was just uh, like, like a charity uh, that I threw out there. I was like, uh, oh, This is okay. going to make things a little bit awkward, I think, at the end here, potentially. I, I'm like, the, those little uh, puffer fish are, but that, that guy's getting a raise. He's never gotten a hit before in his life. We're going to swap right back to the Diddy here. Try to avoid these as best we can. We might take a hit here. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it saves a little bit of time rather than trying to avoid all those. If Spike was on one health, he could have once again done that same strat he did in the last level with the bananas and just kind of made all those tentacles disappear because they count as enemies. So right here, we're just going to wait for that. Go right on in. And just got to avoid those little urch. That's fine. Honestly, that is, you're literally switching to Cranky in the next bit. Yep. So. so everybody say bye to Diddy. I think that's Diddy's last hurrah. No, no, no. He's got one more. He's got one five four. He's got one <laughs> more instance. We got He'll be in one more instance. level later on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That'll be Diddy's last turn. This yeah, is Diddy's this second to last hurrah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was Diddy's last major level, but we yeah, want, yeah. We want that was Cranky his last here. Hurrah. We're just going to get a, a little a little, a little boop. Yeah. But spot. here, now we get Cranky out. So this is probably the single boss that in just the base game gets broken the most by speedrun strats. The IL world, or the, um, what you're supposed to get here for like the max metal shiny gold is like over two minutes. We're going to try to beat him in about 40 seconds. So, uh, so that hurt box that this that Fugu has is ooh. Um I, I almost want to start over. No, just let it. We'll do the backup. We'll do the backup. We'll uh, do the backup. Cr Cranky's power underwater, just to note, is he can swing his cane. So but we're we're we were utilizing that there to get some hits in on Fugu. Um and now Spike knows that every time he gets a hit here, as long as he hits Fugu and the hearts are nice, he's going to get a heart every time. It's guaranteed when you're at one health. Oh, he he's just needs fat, them. though. Oh, no. He's so big. I don't... Uh, uh, those iframes barely hold now. Right there. We're going to hit him again. He's going to push you back. And then... Oh, uh, there we go. <laughs> So yeah, so Spike <laughs> needed those hearts to not go into the the spikes on the wall, or he would have been left there with one health once the iframes came out just getting hit and would have died. It's relatively consistent, but sometimes it gets a little bit uh, of funky, if you guys will pardon the pun. <laughs> <laughs> hey, That's we're not the doing Funky Kong here. <laughs> All right, and now we're to everyone's favorite themed world that's in all video games ever, the juice world, right? The we, juice world. We, we've had the the jungle world, there's the ice world, and now we're at the juice world. That's the just classic, normal, right? Creative classic. World. Now, I do want to say, so we had a lot of stuff going on this level, but I want to, I want everyone to donate with your favorite fruit smoothie. I want to hear about them in the next level because that's another big auto-scroller. And audience, tell me, what's your favorite fruit smoothie? What's your favorite flavor? Same. I heard no watermelon, so I'm disappointed. So this is another one of those really, really difficult run or levels. Very easy to death cycle when things go wrong here. We're going to take an intentional point of damage here to set this cycle up yeah, for the so, Dixie. So you grab Dixie right here, and we can utilize her float for a section, a jump coming up right here. So we can hopefully make a cranky cycle on the next barrel right here. We're going to roll through here. We're going to use this. This is what Dixie allows us to skip with that little double jump. We're going to grab the cranky barrel and go right through. We're going to go up here. We're going to grab this. You can bounce off of those spikes, but it's extremely difficult. We're going to go pogo, pogo. We're going to wait just a little bit. Pogo off of that. Hold on here. We're off for our trusty trolley. We're going to trust. We're going to trust. We're going to trust. Don't it's fall, don't fall, right don't there. fall, don't fall. Beautiful timing. Go right into here, into the next barrel. We're going to take an intentional point of damage in a little bit here coming up to uh, set up some cycles. Right there, beautiful. You'll notice right there, the uh, other claws out of the way. That's right there. Just roll straight through. 
And we're gonna jump to avoid these right here. Roll all the way to the end. One, two, three, full pogo, full pogo, neutral to set this up. If you blast right out of it, you catch that top corner and you get out of the level. So with that, we are on to our fourth of the five auto scrollers in the run. We got 5-2 right here. We're just gonna be in the rocket barrel, as I said. Other than getting into the barrel and mashing out of it as fast as you can and then finishing the level as fast as you can, not much to do. So we got two minutes. New killer, do you have any have we made any money? We've got a lot of love coming in for this run. We've got $25 from Remnant saying, so excited to see some of my favorite streamers and see some of my favorite characters. Donkey, Cranky, and best of all of them. The machine. Machine. So we've got $250 from It's Javen saying, been looking forward to this run all week. One of my favorite games from by far my most watched streamer. Keep that Kong rolling and let's start chasing one million. Woo! Real quick, uh, coming up, there's a very important uh, character that we need to name properly. It's Penguinji coming out right here. There we yeah, go. Penguinji yeah. and the robot continue nukes. All right, we got $50 from John Silverhair saying, let's go, Spike, take down those snowmads. We also got $50 from Chocolate Dave saying, why do they call it Donkey Kong when you no. donk in the roll jumps, donk out the bananas, eat the bananas? Oh my Good luck God. on the run and don't forget the, to crunch a drop. <laughs> you know, the person who made the tweet that that's based on has Chunky has profile picture. <laughs> he does. It's actually, does. It's I, I was I was doom scrolling the other night, and I was like, "Oh my gosh!" <laughs> we can read more donations. <laughs> All right, we got a hundred dollar from Mimi Cute saying, "I've never caught a live Spike Vegeta coming straight at me from Summer Games Done Quick before, and I'm all aboard the hype train." Can I get some hype from the audience, which we already did? No, sure there, there, there Let's give them a even, second helping. Three, two, one. Hype. There we go. <laughs> I, I just need to point out that penguin just shot his friends out of his machine as weapons. Oh, yeah. Wow. I mean, we had Scowl earlier. Yeah, oh, they were he, like. He's penguin. He's a little messed up. Penguin. We got about time for like two more donations we can do. All right, we got $15 from Remnants AXing, donating four plus $11 for the letters D and K. Loving the positive energy and excited to see you run more TROP in the future for that new PB. Keep on rolling deep. No, the 1.4 is happening tonight. <laughs> I can't believe I died in two six. Oh, I was gonna say it's actually been like relatively clean with yeah. the exception of if you take that out, job. this run is a little. It's got some drip on it. It was pretty good. All right. Well, anyways, I got to go for the spike ledge right here. I don't even know if it's faster. Oh, I came up with the strat. Oh, let's go. <laughs> so, just a kiss. With that, on we go. So a general thing you're going to find as we get now into the last few worlds of this game. Uh, we got 5-3 right here. You're going to notice in a lot of places, they give you one barrel. I don't know why I'm bringing this commentary up on this level because there's like three here. But <laughs> in a lot of levels after this, there's one barrel they're going to give you with a Kong in it, and then it's done from there. So you start death cycling at the end of levels, it really can start building on itself. Becomes a solo DK run. Right exactly. Which I've done a lot of solo DK runs. Actually very fun. It trains you for those sorts of backup strats. Anyways, the general theme of this level right now is that uh, conveyor belts are going to move us to the right. When that's happening, ooh, we're just going to start the level over. Yeah. yeah. That's a good <laughs> we're idea. Gonna, we're going to do it again. Yeah. We're just going to do it again. What level? We, we start a level? Yeah, I don't know. I blacked out. Where am I? <laughs> that's our first time seeing fire. Right in Minnesota? What? Did, did you know this level has conveyor belts? <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> there are, yeah. So a general theme about this level is that there are conveyor belts. If they move to the right, I want to ride them to the right because that is going on top of my speed. If they're going to the left, I want to pogo off them because I don't want to go to the left. That just sounds silly. All right, let's not do this again. <laughs> Roll a little deeper. All right, beautifully done. First try, no memes. Now we're going to utilize the cranky bell right there to actually get rid of that enemy and also refill our health so I can take another damage boost right here. Roll right. You just ignore the platforms. Those, we don't need those. Right here off the second one. Roll jump in. Now I'm going to get done. Donkey's little tushy right up against these spikes right here because that's going to set up to be able to do a full roll jump right there. Jumping up to the top shelf, rolling through that guy. He didn't slap me. That's great. Now I'm going to ride this one to the right. 
Pogo for the next few. Go off the fish. Ooh, barely making that platform. That works, that works. Double Pogo right here off the watermelon chunks. And I'm gonna ride this one to the right. Pogo off the left. Ride the long boy. And then pull this one up. Pogo straight up into it. Beautiful movement right there. Get up against this wall. Now we're gonna utilize Dixie Kong right here in one of the cutest little strats in the run. Being able to Pogo off that little bit. Transition over to Dixie on the jump up. Wait for those platforms to get out of the way. Utilize this fruit and then yeah, barely make that right there with Dixie and into the fruit juicer right here. We always slap here. This does nothing, but it feels good. <laughs> I always have to point that out, out once every 10 runs I do on stream because I'm like, there's definitely some people who think you have to do that to progress the level. I mean, you do have to do it. It just doesn't actually do anything. Right. right. Let's do it for the little arm workout. More of a moral obligation than a level up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, first try on that level. Yeah, that was a great, that was a great first, first try. try. <laughs> that was perfect. <laughs> Just, you know. And we could splice that other part out, right? Be legal still. <laughs> <laughs> Can the bot do that? <laughs> Weird, there's just like a minute missing from this run. It's, uh, it's whatever. Anyways, uh, going now into 5-4. So here's where I should have given that commentary earlier. They're basically like, yeah, we're going to give you one barrel and you're done. And that's really important this level because this is the last spot where we want the secret exit at the end. I'm going to transition over to Diddy after this damage boost on the farting toucan right there. Slap our way through with the iframes. And then once I get this Diddy, I need to not take damage basically the rest of the level. I get one freebie and that's it. Otherwise, I cannot take the secret exit. And then I would cry. And, and this is this is now Diddy's final appearance in the game. Yes, this is his, his final hurrah. Yeah, so because at, there at, is going to be one more real underwater section coming up. Yeah, all, so all the Diddy fans, get, get your enjoyment in now. You won't see him anymore. Woo! <laughs> Diddy is my favorite. I do love Diddy, but yeah, Cranky is definitely the king of running this game, or Funky if you play that mode. So we're gonna get this uh, bomb to open up the path. Right there should be another one coming up in a little bit, I think. Nope, actually we gotta pull this, wait for that to go down, slap our way in. Yeah, Roll. neutral off this bad boy, blast, blast, wait, blast. You blast immediately, you fall in a pit and that's it. Hold down right, that does put you in the perfect position to get rid of that fish. And now here's the section where Diddy comes into play with a big climbing section at the end afterwards that'll set up all our cycles for the rest of the level. There is one quick cycle that I'm gonna try to get when I pop out of the water, but I need to be very short with my hops. Uh, don't see it being a thing. Yeah, we're just gonna go up like this. So we can grab slightly slower cycles right here. Barely kind of clip up on that ledge right there. So if, if you remember earlier when we were fighting against the current, we said you, you're supposed to do that with Dixie. Well, you know what? Here we're doing it with Diddy because he's faster for the rest of the level. Yeah, what I'm doing there is I'm alternating back and forth between his jetpack and the breaststroke right there to sort of cancel the pushback that you would get after the jetpack, allowing you to sequence break and get to utilize Diddy for all that swimming section earlier, but being able to get into the secret exit and go to the mass much faster level right here. So that's great. I actually got to take the optimal route through Tropical Freeze here at SGDQ, and I'm very happy. Thank you. No, no jamborees today. Feel very good about that. No jamborees. I never practiced that level. Jam so. <laughs> that's just jamming jams. But now we go into the third and the final level that is going to adhere to those global cycles. So there's going to be certain benchmarks I'm going to try to get to as fast as I can. We'll bounce off this fish. We will be trying to switch over to Cranky here a little ways into the level. And you're going to see, because I have to wait on some of these crushers anyways, there'll be some stalling in a few spots. Boost, boost, nice. Going to be taking some intentional damage up here to kind of really set up the cycle. Oh, wait, actually, no. Intentional damage is the layer for the cycle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, after crank. Neutral off this guy. Wait, go. You want to catch that right as it's coming on its way back up as well. It's very important to time that when he did. This yeah, otherwise, the all these blades right here, yeah, they'd be slaying me right then there. We're going to fire on the first thing. We're going to jump down and. What do you know? It's completely open on the way down with what that do cycle. You know? Beautiful cycle right there. We're going to just ignore all the platforms here because they're going to pop out right for us as we know when they're going to come out. O only the first and second one. So they're the only ones we want. Now just walk through the section because you got to wait for this bad boy. Anyways, then you get to go. It's one of those where it probably looks like, couldn't you just like go fast through all that section? You won't save time. Barely making that last barrel and out of the level. Good stuff.
Again, a lot of the benefit, if we didn't really point it out, that Cranky's Cane just allows you to hit maximum heights that you wouldn't be able to get otherwise with just solo Donkey Kong. So, like right there, even if I'd done a full boosted bounce off of that owl at the end, I would not have made that last plat for that last barrel. I would have been in a pit. So, that's why Cranky's so powerful. This is potentially one of the coolest levels in the entire run. We got ice. Speedrunners generally like ice physics. Hopefully, we can combine it with our own and go really, really fast. Are you going to get a little lucky right here? Oh, of course, it didn't give me that. So I am now going to be down some health the rest of the level. So I'm going to have to make sure I don't get a damage boost here in a little bit. Oof. A little bit awkward there, but should be fine. Uh, so yeah, the, we're, we're just now getting the ice physics. And again, the cool thing here is those little water ones see a little bit of it with the speed boost there. Because we're on ice, we can kind of hold the momentum from those watermelons a little bit longer, and then we can actually add our roll speed to it, which leads to some absolutely fantastic-looking uh, skips coming uh, up. Also, that, that puzzle piece path was completely intended. That, that, that is the faster way to go through there. But here we're going to roll. Look at this speed. Oh. Oop. Oh, slap it. It's fine. We're going for solo Donkey Kong strats right now at this point. Yes, oh, 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 solo oh. DK. Oh, <laughs> okay. But we don't need a haircut. Spike kept the speed with Cranky throughout that whole section. But, yeah, we, we just need to finish one. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. <laughs> we just had to get across the finish line. That was some unfortunate damage we took out. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, always take applause. It'll be great. There's a little bit of luck to that, especially that first spike. Sometimes you get hit by it. That sometimes was you don't. It's, it's basically random. There's not much that we like. Yeah, at least I've never learned how to consistently not get hit by that spike. About once every, like, five runs, it'll just hit me, and I'm like, okay. All right, that's Spike, fine. remember, cutscene. Yeah, we got to watch this cutscene. I'm contractually obligated. It's only going to waste about 25 seconds right here. We're on good pace. I only died once. Um, so y'all need to know the lore of why this... Uh, why this boss is angry at us. We've been skipping all the cutscenes. We're not going to skip this one right here. My man is just chilling. Coca-Cola bear just on his time off. Going hard on a little popsicle right here. And then y'all just crash his party. Lost his popsicle. Aww. Quick, why are there piranhas in the fruit? <laughs> look at how upset he is. And look at that grin. They knew what they did. <laughs> Also, Spike, did you know there's a fun fact about this boss fight? Oh, what's that? The arena rotates. Oh, my God, this arena rotates. That's the only interesting thing we have to say. Please read donations for the next three minutes. <laughs> All right. We have $25 from We Are Hugh 668 saying, Good luck, Spike. Looking forward to an awesome run. You're going to crush it. Donation goes to Runner's Choice. <laughs> what is there left? What hasn't been met? There, we've actually have opened quite a few more incentives now. Uh, we have the incredible crisis cutscene showcase coming up. Some Kirby tilt and tumble upgrades to Warpless. Uh, and a, quite a number of bid wars too as well, such as the Turnip Boy commits tax evasion hat choice, which right now Bird Hat is in the lead, uh, followed by Top Hat at the door, but there's some time to get those in if you want to see some of your favorites catch up there. Yo, Nuclear, which was, what you, you played that game. You thought, thought it was pretty cool. What's your favorite hat in that game? I rocked the crown, but that is not a choice on here. Oh, um, yes. But I do see Bald is on here. Yo, Bald. Know, we can, maybe we get some Bald up here. Bald is beautiful. Yo, a little Bald energy. A little Bald is beautiful. All right, all the rest of my donations will go to us. Turn a boy commits tax evasion bald with uh, going bald. bald. <laughs> I, I respect that choice. That's a funny thing. That's a funny thing considering how many people mistook the runner badge for you. Right. <laughs> this is Ichiban. I am the one who is an advocate for baldness. Let's go. All right. Have time for a couple more. Donations? Oh please God! All right. Get me to shut up, please. We've got twenty dollars from UW Ness saying, "Rolling deep, let's go, Spike." I also have $25 from Boba Turtle saying, so excited to see the Spike Vegeta in action at my first time at GDQ in person. Best of luck on the run and much love to my friends for tagging along on such a fun adventure. We also have $25 from Cherry Scary saying, GDQ is a time honored tradition in this house and we always have to make sure to catch Spike's runs and commentary. And he can do it all at once. What a legend. Donation goes to Spike's choice, which is Ball Turnip. Uh, also, another quick fun fact, if you did not notice, our friend the Coca-Cola Bear is turning more purple every time we put him in the juice. 
Yeah, it's actually cool. It's like a little progress meter that's just filling up as you're going through the fight. What? How does his head stay white is the real question. Right. <laughs> Don't ask questions. I want whatever that conditioner is. Apparently, like, it's really good at preserving... Uh, Anyway, continue. <laughs> We're talking about donations. Sure thing. We got $25 from Mike Shepard saying, had to donate for my favorite DK64 rando. I mean, tropical freeze. Yeah. <laughs> May your pogos be Chris Spike. You did pretty good tonight. Our last hit right here. We're going to try to climb the one, the two, the three. We got one more block right here. It's actually kind of a precise motion to... Thank you. We successfully got through that whole fight without anyone falling asleep. It was great. Um, there's that, but it is actually kind of precise, being able to break a block, stop, pick it up, and throw it all in one quick motion. Because if you wait too long, the other blocks fall down, the bomb blows up, you look like an idiot, and that's not fun. But now we are back. The plot of this game, uh, Frederick and the Snowmads, not the nomads like I called them back on stream years ago. Um, they have taken over Donkey Kong Island, and we have been fighting through all these worlds to get back to Donkey Kong Island. Each of these levels represent a different world in Donkey Kong Country Returns, the prequel to this game. Uh, and now starting off with Homecoming Hijinks. This is the worst level in the game if your name is Spike Vegeta. If you're anyone else, it's still pretty hard. But yeah, we're going to try to go for some fun tricks right here, including this barrel blast trick coming up. Beautiful. We skipped a, like a big old swing you're supposed to do there. Going to go right through here. We have taken the point of damage, though, so we got to be a little careful. We're going to roll through here. Those spikes aren't going to catch us because we're rolling, rolling, rolling. Jump up. Got to be careful because this little guy with the fire arrow could be a bit of a turd. We're going to roll through there, avoid the next fire arrow, grab this. We're going to use this, keep the momentum from the swing a little bit here up, and we're going to grab this. We're going to let go. It's going to break the icicle just in time. Avoid that. Fire right through here. We're going to do a big old roll, and then we're going to bounce off this, jump, start climbing, start climbing, start climbing. This is going to be really scary coming up, I promise. He's, Spike's going to make it. We're going to go off. We're going to jump. We're going to pogo <laughs> right into the barrel. Beautifully done. Nice cruncher drop as well. Yeah, the cruncher drop was actually really good. That little bit where I grabbed the grass, dropped straight down, and went straight into the hole. Shouts to, we have a lot of great members of the community, Michael Goldfish, DKS, Not So Newbie, NKB, so many others. Uh, Cruncha comes up with a lot of super interesting strats in this game over the years. We lovingly call that one the Cruncha drop. Looks so smooth, but it's very punishing. And now I'm actually going to shut up for this level because David Wise, one of the greatest video game composers of all time. This is an incredibly difficult level, but I'm just going to let you all vibe to it because this is his favorite track he has ever composed for a video game. That was perfect. Beautifully done. It's actually a really difficult level as well. A lot of the timings for getting into those uh, barrels, avoiding the owls. The There's a big old rolling ship section where like you're supposed to just slowly sit on this ship as it rotates oh. up, but you like you instead just roll and pogo off of these owls that are perfectly placed. Honestly, the level designers of this game did a fantastic job of like, there's an intended way to play the level, but they put you know enemies in just perfect places where you can jump to them, and it's like the exact distance for like a max pogo or like a Dixie bounce. Incredibly well made video game. Yeah, that is an absolutely beautiful level from like all standpoints, and uh, like Gold was saying, incredibly punishing if you make one mistake. But now we go into 6-3 right here. Some cool momentum conservation you can have here. Rolling down this ice right here. Oh, I am going to just do a little bit of a nopesy whoopsy out of that. That's fine. Okay, yeah, we, we recovered. We're good, we're good. We're this good. is also a level where there's only a Diddy Barrel. You cannot get Cranky back in this level, so we're trying to be a little bit careful because any, any death means that we lose Cranky for the rest of the level, which 
we can do. It's not a problem, but it's a lot slower. It's a lot less fun as well. So we're going to be. We already said goodbye to Diddy. We can't get him back. Yeah, that's definitely the Diddy barrel of Shane, if you have to pick that one up back there. Now we're going to utilize Cranky's cane in order to gain a little more height right here. Skip out on that whole grass section. Go across. Oh, I'm going to clip the platform. That's fine. And then look in the background chat. You can see Donkey Kong, and he is holding up a Wii U. <laughs> they didn't change that to a Switch in the Switch version. That's fine. Yeah, we call, it, similar. we call it the Diddy shape. It's kind of funny, like, just randomly in this level, for no reason, there's a Diddy barrel. We joke that the devs realized that Diddy was the worst of the three power-up mm. pongs, so they just kind of, like, threw him in a level randomly towards the <laughs> end. It's like, here, you know, if you die here, we'll just give you Diddy, even though you really want Dixie, because Dixie's, of course, the best Kong. And now we get the final auto-scroller of the run. Chat. Twitch chat. Yes! <laughs> This, this has been such an awesome run to get to bring to you all. We got one more auto score before the final four levels and the boss of the run. I want to hear a lot of awesome donations being read here by Nuclear. Nuclear, take it away. You got about two and a half minutes. All right, with that, I do have another verse for us. Oh, beautiful. We got $25 from Cartridge Blower saying, more lyrics for you. Cranky Kong is bouncing on his cane. So Diddy and Dixie stay in their lane. He <laughs> helps you go fast. So your splits are gold. And like Scrooge McDuck, he's really old. Huh, <laughs> CK, Cranky Kong, CK. He has lots of lower back pain, huh? <laughs> <laughs> that was great, I love that. <laughs> Now we're clapping on the two instead of the one, and I was confused. <laughs> yeah, then we, we need to get our clap back together. That was uh... we, we wasted all the claps at Odyssey. Yeah, last the time. claps were all used last night. No more claps. I thought about saying, because y'all clapped for every single time we got a moon. I was like, what if they clap for every banana? I would, would that include all these little ones? Yeah, though? that's like a 10 pack right there. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, I hear some five packs back there. Let's go. All right, I'm going to need 10 for me all right here. Please, God, let's read donations instead of doing that. <laughs> All right, I have $5,000. Woo! That was so much better than clapping. And that's from Excited Viewer Woo! saying, man, I love Tropical Freeze. I do, too. I do, I too, Excited I Viewer. Too. <laughs> They're one of the 15 people that played this game. Yeah. Man, this game is fantastic. I really want to take like just two seconds to say this game's fantastic. If you haven't played it and you like 2D platformers at all, thank you, crowd. If you like 2D platformers at all, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. All right. Now there's Please even, play it. There's even more logic now to J-Hob's strategy of avoiding all Right. <laughs> Y'all are going to get me dodging bananas by the end of this. One more quick donation. I'm a snowball. It's great. All right, we got $25 from Umrog T. Burns saying, I can barely contain my excitement for this run. Let's go, GDQ. Woo! All right, we did not die as a snowball. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's like two people in the back who are like, I'm going to do it. <laughs> they, they, a, made, they made the joke, clapping. we got to yeah. do it. <laughs> I got to get in there. All right, now we go into another one of the very hardest levels in the entire run. We got 6-5, Forest Folly. Uh, Ghoul, I'm going to hand this one to you. The history, this is the most decorated level IL in Tropical Free speedrunning history. Yeah, this is a very fun level. Um, so this has gone through a lot of different iterations, but uh, there's going to be a lot of these giant snowflakes in this level. And uh, funnily enough, Cranky can pogo off of these. Uh, also, uh, Funky can jump off of them for some reason as well. Uh, they're meant to be kind of damaging. Uh, this level's gone through a ton of iterations, so you see we're going to roll right on through. We're going to bounce on up. Going to go right here. We're going to bounce off this. We're going to pogo. We're going to pogo. We're going to roll right here. Keep all that momentum. We're going to stop again. We're going to slow down. And we're going to do right here, and we're going to go around one time and around another time. Roll right on through, grab the vine. We're going to roll here, hit the checkpoint, jump. We're going to pogo off this owl, pogo off the snowflake, roll right through, hit this. we got to wait on the cycle. And here we go. It's a little bit scary coming up. We're going to roll. We're going to pogo off the big guy. We're going to pogo off the owl. Right into the barrel in one shot. Let's go. 
Yeah, nice setup right there where you drop into neutral to get that damage boost right here, getting on top of the wheel. Wait till I get to the top, then roll off of it, grab the vines. Whoop! Go right under that guy. He thought he was going to get me, but I tricked him. It was great. Rolling through here, we're going to set up for a series of max pogos. Neutral off this guy, mini pogo. Losing Craig right there, actually not a big deal. Because, yeah, we're going to take a damage boost right here. Anyways, go all the way around, roll off maximum distance, and get to the barrel. Very well done. By the way, if you ever have a chance, check out the Cranky IL in the game. It is one of the craziest single ILs in any video game ever. The, the funky one. The, the funky, yeah. Yeah, the yeah, funky. yeah. I was, the Cranky one is really, really cool, too. But the funky one, because that last section in, even though it was really cool how we spaced all the pogoing and everything, funky can also go really, really fast in that section. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, funky just is all the Kongs together. He, yeah. he, he gets Cranky's bounces. He can hover. He can do, even do other things. Mm -hmm. He's but, got a better version of Dixie's double jump for some reason. But now for probably the coolest visuals of any level, the kind of negative visuals. Um, there are other levels in this game that do this visual style. They they get skipped because we take the shorter route. Um, but I just love this visual style. Yeah, especially in Miss Abyss, I believe, is the water level that's the uh, silhouette. Yeah. It's so well done, especially because like there's like parts of the level that like light up, and at which point like. The silhouette visuals drop out when it lights up again, then it gets dark, and then the silhouette show up again. Really, really well done. So now we do want Dixie here. This is not a cranky level. Um, so that, that is why we did not wait for a cranky cycle there. Um, really cool trick coming up at the end, um, but it's it's a climb to get there. So right there, he jumped out to try to bait the uh, camera into loading the stuff, because we got to get these vines to swing in a specific way right here. We're going to grab this, jump into the barrel, go right on up. And we got to do through this section. After this, we got to do a bit of a climb. Again, Dixie's going to help us out a bit by getting us some extra height on some of our jumps. So we're going to go right here, up here, into the spring. We're going to fly up to the right. Uh, if you land on specific platforms, it's what spawns the next platform section to start doing. So we're going to jump on there. And we're going to go up into the barrel. We're going to roll to the right. We're going to jump, pogo off of this. And All then. Right, I want to set up for this. Yeah. Oh, no! Oh, no, it's fine. What, what do you do? do? I'm uh, kidding. So yeah, so that barrel's just loaded there, so Spike just knows where it is, so he can <laughs> drop down. All right, I gotta see a show of hands. Who thought we died there? Anybody that <laughs> thought we died, raise your hands. Come on, I know some of you did. There we go. There we go. Lie for me, make it funnier. I can't, I can't yes. believe you yes. actually got people. Yeah, that was pretty good. For how many times? <laughs> for how many times people pull that trick? It's, it's, it's pretty good. Still funny. Still funny man, let me tell you. All right, but yeah, that was yeah. If you and you can only do it if you hold right there immediately. If you wait even a split second, it'll go away. But if you just buffer holding right, you're always going to sit in the barrel down there, and then it gets out of the way, and then you can shoot up and save a bunch of time. It's fun. That being said, we're now going into the second to last main level of the run, Frozen Frenzy, right here. I always think of this as like the Crash Bandicoot level. It gives me real like the lab vibes from. Crash one. But we're going through, we're going to be utilizing more of Dixie's hover ability to hover over some gaps. It is worth noting that you can actually do this level with Cranky. I've never personally learned it. It is much harder and it saves like a second or two. But uh, yeah, there's some gaps where like, it makes no sense they can cross it. But we'll be utilizing the Dixie strats right here. Get that puzzle piece because you're waiting. Shout out to the puzzle piece. So right here, all these little platforms are going to be, if they go over those uh, like electricity balls, they light up and you uh, take damage if you're on them. That includes through Cranky's Pogo, I believe. So even Cranky has to like kind of time his jumps to avoid those. We're going to completely ignore this section. And we're going to roll through here, go under that, barely float up easily go up here, jump, roll through this. Utilize this hoot right here to cross this entire gap. Have Dixie stall out to make sure that's not a problem. Go through here, just lean that up enough to where we can make that top shelf. And then we got another Omega right here. He's covered on all sides, so we just want to hover over him. Flow through these three enemies, and I want to save her health right here for this damage boost to cross over this entire gap. We're already done with Diddy, and this is going to be the last hurrah for Dixie in the run. Going through, taking the immediate damage boost, and out of 6-7. Well done. That's, that's another one of those very difficult levels, and it's very easy when you make a mistake because you lose your partner, Kong. It becomes so much harder. Again, Dixie makes that level a lot easier than it looks, or makes it feel like look a lot easier than it actually is. Yeah. 
Because once again, like, you get into, like, the last world and a half of this game, and they give you a barrel specifically not even, like, halfway through at the beginning. And almost all these levels you can see, we have a planned out A damage boost point. So one mistake, and you're losing all of the capabilities of that extra con. That being said, we got one more main level right here, Meltdown Mayhem. We're going to be utilizing, uh, I almost said Chunky Kong. I've got DK64 on the brain. Switch it to Cranky Kong right here, the other CK of the family. So we can get up and use Rhombus the Rambi or whatever we're calling him at this point. Rumpus the Rhombus. Whoop. Oh, y'all are going to be clapping a lot this level. <laughs> <laughs> So right here, so the one thing about Rambi is it's very visible. You see the startup on every one of those. Uh, the, the, his run is basically the equivalent of a roll for another Kong, but Rambi is especially rough with that, where it's so like slow in the start. So we're going to be using the Pogo. This level is the scary, like very scary and so easy to kind of zone out, but you have to stop and go a lot in this level. And it's any mistake, again, ends up with uh, you dying because you fall into the lava. Uh, and if you lose Rambi, you see these big old Rambi blocks? Oh. Those say you can't go through. So there are there are plenty of times where speedrunners will do what we call a sad pause, where you'll jump off of Rambi to save yourself, and then you'll realize you can't finish the level, and you'll just pause and just go, oh, no. Going to go for a really fun section right here of pogoing with Rambi. Going through that whole section. Nicely done. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> we got most of it accounted enough. So right here again, we got to stop. We got to wait for that platform to fall because we can't quite make that jump. We're going to go start pogoing. Carry the pogo up from here again. You're saving about a tenth of a second every time you don't have to start up Rambi's run. Then let this one ride on for just a second, then go for it. Ride through it, jump out of it. We got to stop again. We got to wait a little bit. Here we go. And this is and the most evil barrel down. in the game. If you the, fire too soon, you'll fire into those rocks and fall right into the lava. And the, everybody has done it multiple times. The whole just, level was a test of patience just to get to that barrel and make you wait for five seconds. Shout outs to Michael Goldfish. Legendary speedrunner of this game. First time this got to be shown in a marathon was with him over seven years ago. Oh God, I feel old as heck now. <laughs> With that, out of the last level, we're going to the final boss of the run, Nuclear. You got any more donations for me before I take on Frederick and save Donkey Kong Island? Of course, we've got $10 from Bionic Iguana saying the 502 crew are rolling deep with Spike Vegeta, the Jack Buck of speedrunning. Cranky is a duck. <laughs> that, is of, that is some of the highest praise. Yeah. <laughs> Also have the, the duck part, right? The, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I was, I was talking the, yeah. the, the Jack Buck part. <laughs> we have twenty-five dollars from Vivid Lance, sixty-four saying, "Oh, Fuck. donations." <laughs> <laughs> I almost said banana there. You almost got. <laughs> Dude, I want that to come over the intercom every single time we get a donation. <laughs> oh, donation. donation. Well done. <laughs> we sounded really hot there. So that, that was, that was actually like really good. That was very good. <laughs> they should hire us for the DK64 randomizer yeah. official release. <laughs> oh, yeah. donation. Oh, update. Okay. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so right here we got Frederick. The way I always describe this, it's like Super Mario 64. You've got the Bowser throws, inherently very simple things to do. But God, is it hard to hit it when you are on pace at the end of a run, trying to go nine for nine on bouncing on him. Because just like Scowl much earlier in the run, he gives you three instances to hit him, and then never again after that. If I miss any of these hits, I'm losing a full minute. We lose too many minutes, marathon's over. Go too far over schedule, it just won't continue it. We want to see Minecraft, people. Coming up right after this. Also, shout outs to the shooting out ice dragons. That, that's what those are that are falling It's an out incredibly out. metal bot. Yeah, very <laughs> metal. They're literally dragons. Uh, so by the way, you'll notice that now the entire uh, stage is covered in ice. So we got to deal with ice physics while also trying to land these jumps. And uh, phase two is always the hardest because on top of everything else, every single time he runs on this time, he's going to run through in a second. He runs at a different speed. So you've got to stand at different spots while getting in these positions in ice physics. And again, it's so easy to mess up, and it feels like it's so... Oh, my gosh. You, you'll notice Spike's doing a little pound on the ground. That's kind of just to help stop the ice physics movement. I thought you were going to slide a little yeah, too far there. Yeah, I up right there as we were talking about. Now, right here, the RNG has set what this is going to be, which falling pattern you get from the, uh, the blocks. First time you play this, anybody's going to die with that. <laughs> that happens. Anyone's... You didn't? <laughs> Who's lying? Raise your hand if you're lying right now. Who's that? 
Furby Master, shut up! <laughs> <laughs> He would, though. He would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, actually, there, there are a couple of people I believe it for, and Kirby might be one of them. <laughs> okay, other than Kirby Master, everybody else falls in that lava. I've been peeking back. Kirby's been, been shouting this over. My man, my man, the high energy. I love it. Shout out to Kirby Master, one of the best parts of the community. Knows so many speed runs and incredibly supportive. I got three more hits right here. Kirby, these are for you. So it's going to be really Kirby, funny if I Kirby, also a known lover of cats. Man, yes. man loves himself a cat. All right, here we go. We got three more hits. We got one. Oh, oh, oh. oh Kirby, those were for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so oh, for three. Let's go. Let's, let's get a round yeah. of applause for the open oh, three. Yeah, so what? <laughs> yes. So a lot of times what happens, you miss one, you're going to miss them all. Because then all of a sudden you're like sliding around on the ice and everything, and he doesn't stun. So because it was on the last phase, I only lose 25 seconds for that. Shout we're going high. We're going, we're going. Yep, we're going low. We're going high. We're going high. We're going low. Okay. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Gotta get, Gotta get them this time. All right. That one. That's two. Oh, and time is time. Time is Woo! time. Time is everything. <laughs> Hooray. We saved the Donkey Kong world. <laughs> All right, now we go play DK64 Randall, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to head out so you guys back. <laughs> no, I, I'm very happy with that. That was good. That was a very well good done run. run. That was actually pretty well done. My one death was just absolutely diving into a pit in two six. That was great. Um, what are the quarter deaths? We did have to kind of like leave the one level go back in. But. We were like, what happened? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyways, so I know we're a little bit behind schedule. We want to get to that Minecraft run. We want to get to Super Mario Sunshine, uh, freaking Banjo Tooie, the, the silly blog and everything coming up, and so many other great speed runs. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Big, big shout outs to my couch, my Illuminati, my three chairs right here, GK, Ghoul, and Derby. Y'all are awesome. I, Jay, I love you all. Y'all were an amazing audience. Massive, massive shout outs to Nuclear for reading all the donations and for y'all for raising over $20,000 in the course of that run. Get hyped for Minecraft. I'll see y'all later. Bye -bye. Thank you so much, Spike Vegeta. That was a fantastic run. Great energy. We got $100 from Anonymous saying cheers to Spike and Doctors Without Borders. Chat will be taking a quick break, but SGDQ 2022 will continue shortly. Uh, while we take a break, feel free to get up, stretch, maybe get a snack, get, fill up your drink, and stay tuned. Coming up soon is Minecraft.
Welcome back, everyone, to SGDQ 2022, powered by Twitch. I'm your host, Nuclear, and we've got some Minecraft coming up here soon. I also really want to see us hit that one million mark here tonight. We've got $100 from Spanky saying, one million, let's go! Chat, I know we can do it, so keep those donations rolling in. We're gonna have a quick word here from our sponsor, Red Bull. <laughs> Red Bull gives you wings. All right, we've got $250 from Morgan saying, doing my part, let's get to one million. Thanks to the runners and staff for another great event. Also have $50 from Anonymous saying, I so appreciate the dedication and passion of everyone involved in this event. I look forward to it every summer and I am happy to support a great cause. Also have $10 from Spicy Chickpea saying, let's go, Twitch chat. Also $25 from Axe Jacks saying, Twitch chat here, doing our bestest. Also got $5 from Av Bakes saying, friendly reminder that you can get a free channel subscription with Amazon Prime. And that is a great reminder. Chat, did you know that all subs, gift subs, bits will be going towards Doctors Without Borders by GDQ? That's right after taxes are taken out that those will be given to Doctors Without Borders. So keep those coming in. That is a great way to contribute. And with Amazon Prime, you can do that for free. Also have twenty from five. Oh, sorry, twenty dollars from Oil Star saying, "Shout outs to all the volunteers, staff, runners, and the crowd who are making this event amazing." And I cannot agree more. The crowd's energy is just incredible. We've got fifty dollars from Captain Luigi saying, "Try to give a little every time I'm able to catch GDQ." Love watching all these games. All right, chat, we're going to go to an interview real quick and then we'll be on our way to Minecraft. Here we go, Throw, going to an interview. Thank you so much, Nukes. Good evening, everyone. This is Summer Gets, yeah, hi, hello, how are you? I can look over and see you, and it's the coolest thing. Ah! This is Summer Games Done Quick 2022. I am Mr. Game and Shout, and I have some awesome prizes to show you. I'm looking forward to this. I don't get to do a lot of nighttime prize segments, so I got, I got excited for this. I want to take it easy. I want to be nice and cozy. So we got the slippers, we got the pajamas, we got some cute friends, and we got some awesome prizes. Everything I'm going to be telling you about tonight, with the exception of our GAN prize, is available through the end of Banjo-Tooie a little bit later on. So you've got a little bit of time, not too much. Things move fast. If you want your chance to get in and win these, gamesdonequick.com slash donate is where you go. Starting off... With a game that y'all like so much, you added it to the marathon. From Billy Phoenix, we have Minecraft Nintendo Switch Edition. $5 minimum donation gets you in to win this. Just five bucks. Just five bucks. That, that you know, Twitch train that's happening, it, boom, right there. Easy. Five bucks gets you in to win this. Thank you, Billy Phoenix, for sending that in. From Pearl Pop, provider of some of the finest perlers, if I can get it, Extracted from all the other prizes. There's so many. We have Banjo-Kazooie. This is an absolutely gorgeous piece. Pearl Pop is the master of the matte melt. Just absolutely fantastic. Love all of the stuff that they send into us. $10 minimum donation. Get you entered to win this. With that $10, you are also going to be entered to win, courtesy of Cute Monster Props, this Kong pin and this Krem coin. 
They're about to zoom in and tell me, oh my gosh, I held it right side up on the first try. <laughs> see, this, this is the benefit of being cozy. It all starts to work out. Now let me see if I can get them on the camera. $10 minimum donation. Cute monster props. Thank you for sending these in. Uh, also from Cute Monster Props, also available for a $10 minimum donation, we have a Metal Power Star and a Shine Sprite. We've got Super Mario Sunshine coming up a little bit later tonight. Looking forward to that. Again, $10 minimum donation, gamesdonequick.com. Get you in to win these. You can see the full list of prizes that we have available right now. I'm just showing you a selection, but believe me, there is more. From Fangamer and Rare, you know how much I love having friends? And you can have a couple of your own $20 minimum donation get you into win. Banjo and Kazooie plushes. I mean, look at them. They're just adorable. They're nice friends. $20 minimum donation get you into win that. Also for that $20 minimum donation, you can get in to win. Also from Fangamer and Rare. I'm going to pick that up in a second. The banjo Tui vinyl soundtrack box set. Grant Kirkhope, one of the absolute best in the business. This would be a fine addition to any gaming soundtrack collection, and it could become a part of yours. $20 minimum donation gets you in to win this. And also, now that I just dropped it on the ground, for a $20 minimum donation from Minturn Makers, we have this DK barrel pen. There we go. We got the DK logo on it. We got the barrel print. This is so cool. We've got a few of these pens this event, and they're just like... They're so nifty. I really love these. I wish I could have it. I can't, but you can. $20 minimum donation gets you in to win this. Maybe it's a little cold where you are. We can help that as well. Siebes WSB has sent us a portal stitched blanket covered, let me get these right way up, in companion cubes. Come on, who doesn't want this? I love this thing. This is great. It's cozy, it's comfy. $25 minimum donation gets you in to win this blanket and all of the other prizes I have shown you. Also still available right now through the end of Banjo-Tooie is our daily prize. From Finji, we have, thank you for helping me hide this, a tunic-themed Xbox Series X. This is absolutely gorgeous tunic artwork covering three sides of it. Absolutely stunning. $100 single donation will get you in to win this. And with that $100 donation, you'll be halfway towards being entered to win our grand prize this event. Heroic Replicas hooking us up once again with a six-piece grand prize pack. Surprisingly hard to say. Featuring Sly Cooper's cane, the falchion from Fire Emblem. We have an orb. Okay. I wasn't sure if you would. I wanted to give you the chance. Uh, we've got a Celeste uh, winged strawberry vinyl. We've got the Kinstone from Minish Cap, and we've got the Mermaid Pendant. There we go. $200 cumulative donation throughout the marathon gets you in to win that. What does that mean? Every time you donate, we are adding up those numbers. If your donations throughout the week meet or exceed $200, you are automatically entered to win that grand prize. So... Once again, gamesdonequick.com slash donate. Get your donations in. You can see the full list of prizes we have available. Maybe some other times during the week you want to put in some other donations. Get up to that 200. Get entered to win the grand prize. We are not remotely done. We have a lot of amazing stuff left to show you, but the week moves fast, so please get those donations in. Clearly you have been. We're just $830,000 already. That's incredible. Thank you so much for that. Thank you for extending GDQ. We've got another game you all wanted in the schedule coming up next, My Minecraft. Looking forward to this one. Thanks again, everybody. I am Mr. Gaming Chat. Y'all are amazing. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to spending time with you. Enjoy the rest of the runs. We'll see you later. Thank you so much, Mr. Game and Shout. Love those prizes. Lots of great things to win. There's also a lot of great incentives have been opened up here, including our bonus game, Sound Voltex, tomorrow. So make sure to get those donations in, and when you do, make sure to select an incentive. Uh, that is, there's tons and tons of great choice, and also some.